can you, by no drift of circumstance, get from him why he puts on this confusion, grating so harshly all his days of quiet with turbulent and dangerous lunacies? He does confess he finds himself distracted, but from what cause he will by no means speak. Nor do we find him forward to be sounded, but with a crafty madness keeps aloof when we would bring him unto some confession of his true state. <sighs> Did he receive you well? Most like a gentleman. But with much forcing of his disposition. Negard of question, but of our demands most free in his reply. Did you essay him to any pastime? Madam, it so fell out that certain players we o'erwrought along the way. Of this we told him, and there did seem in him a kind of joy to hear of it. They're about the court, and as I believe have already order this night to play before him. Oh, tis most true, and he entreated me to... Have your majesties here and see the matter. But with all my heart, and it doth much content me to hear him so inclined. Good gentlemen, give him a further edge, and drive his purpose on to these delights. We will, oh, my, my lord. lord. <laughs> Sweet Gertrude, leave us too, for we have closely sent for Hamlet hither, that he, as twere by accident, may hear affront Ophelia. Her mother and myself, lawful espials, will so bestow ourselves that, seeing unseen, we may of their encounter frankly judge, and gather, as he is behaved, if it be the affliction of his love or no, that thus he suffers for. I shall obey you. And for your part, Ophelia, I do wish your good beauties be the cause of Hamlet's wildness. So do I hope your virtue will bring him to his wonted way again, to both your honors. Madam, I wish it may. <laughs> Ophelia, walk you here. Uh, uh, gracious, so please you, we will bestow ourselves. Read on this book that show of such an exercise may color your loneliness. We are off to blame in this. Tis too much proof that with devotion's visage and pious action we do sugar or the devil himself. Oh, I hear him coming. Let's withdraw, my lord. To be or not to be? That's the question. Whether it's as nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against such dear troubles and by opposing in them. To die. To sleep. No more. Die. To sleep. To sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time? The oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely, the pangs of despised love. The insolence of office, the law's delay, the spurns that patient merit of the unworthy takes when he himself might his quietest make with a bare bodkin. Who would bear these fardels to grunt and sweat under a weary life except for the fear of something after death? The undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns puzzles the will. and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others we know not of. Thus, conscience does make cowards of us all. And thus, the native hue of resolution is sicklied o'er with the pale cast of thought. And enterprises of great pith and moment with this regard, their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Soft you now. The fair Ophelia. Live, and thy orisons be all my sins remembered. Good my lord, 
How does your honor for this many a day? I humbly thank you. Well, well, well. My lord, I have remembrances of yours that I have long and long to re-deliver. I pray you now receive them. No, 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 I never oh, gave you all. My honorable lord, you know right well you did. But with them, words of such sweet breath composed as made the things more rich. Their perfume lost, take these again, for to the noble mind rich gifts wax poor when givers prove unkind. There, my lord. Are you honest? My lord? Are you fair? What means your lordship? That if you be honest and fair, your honesty should admit no discourse to your beauty. Could beauty, my lord, have better commerce than with honesty? Aye, truly. For the power of beauty would sooner transform honesty from what it is into a bald than the force of honesty can transform beauty into his likeness. And this was sometimes a paradox, but now time gives it proof. I did love you once. Indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. You should not have believed me. For virtue cannot so inoculate our old stock, but we shall relish of it. I loved you not. I was the more deceived. Get thee to a notary. Well, wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I am myself indifferent honest, yet I can accuse me of such things as it were better my mother had not borne me. I am very proud, revengeful, ambitious, with more offenses in my back than I have thoughts to put them in, imagination to give them shape or time to act them in. What should fellows such as I do crawling between earth and heaven? We are errant knaves, all believe in none of us. Get thee to a nunnery. Farewell. Where's your mother? At home, my lord. When the door be shut upon her, that she may play the fool nowhere but in her own house. Farewell. Oh, help him, you sweet heaven! If you will marry, I give you this plague for thy dowry. Be as chaste as ice. As pure as snow, you shall not escape calumny. To an honorary, go, and quickly to farewell. And if thou wilt need Mary, marry a fool. For wise men know well what monsters you make of them. To a nunnery, go. Oh, you heavenly powers, restore him! I have heard of your paintings too. God hath given you one face, and you make yourselves another. You jig, you amble, and you lisp. Then you nickname God's creatures, and you make your wantonness your ignorance. Go to, I'll no more aunt. It hath made me mad. I say, we will have no more marriages. Those that are married already, all but one, shall live. The rest shall keep as they are. To a nunnery, go. Ah! What a noble mind is here o'erthrown! The courtier scholars, soldiers, eye, tongue, sword, the expectancy and rose of the fair state, the glass of fashion and the mold of form, the observed of all observers, quite, quite down. And I, the lady's most deject and wretched, that sucked the honey of his music vows, now see that noble and most sovereign reason, like sweet bells jangled out of tune and harsh, that unmatched form and feature of blown 
own youth blasted with ecstasy! Oh! Woe is me to have seen what I have seen! See what I see! Uh. Love. His affections do not that way tend. <laughs> Nor what he spake, though it lacked form a little, was not like madness. There's something in his soul o'er which his melancholy sits on brood, and I do doubt the hatch and the discourse will be some danger. Which, for to prevent, I have in quick determination thus set it down. He shall with speed to England for the demand of our neglected tribute. Happily the seas and countries different with variable objects shall expel this something settled matter in his heart, whereon his brains still beating puts him thus from fashion of himself. What think you, aunt? It, it shall do well. But yet do I believe the origin and commencement of his grief sprung from neglected love. How oh, now, Ophelia? You need not tell us what Lord Hemus said. We heard it all. My lord, do as you please, but if you hold it fit, after the play, let his queen mother all alone entreat him to show his grief. Let her be round with him, and I'll be placed, so please you, in the ear of all their conference. If she find him not, to England send him, or confine him where your wisdom best shall think. It shall be so. Madness in great ones must not unwatched go. 